Okay, so I hope you're seeing my screen right now. Let me know if you're not able to. Let me check if I start recording. Okay. All right, now before the break, we stop at the shape function of N1, how we get N1. Then if you do your homework later on, to find N2, N3, and N4, you will get this form. So N, the, again, what is N? N is your sh of the shape form. Eh? It's the same, it's a shape function. Uh, you will see this one when uh, when you study about vibration. Yeah, shape function is how how your beam behave under loading. Right, this is the shape the, the shape form. Right. Okay, so you after you do your homework, you rewrite all this equation. You will get what is your n one, n two, n three, and n four. So again, this is uh, your homework. Eh? Go back and uh, try to derive or how try to get, try to understand what how you get n1, n2, n3, n4 in this long uh, equation over here. So we have the value of n1, n2, n3, and n4, and we rewrite this equation. Uh, vertical displacement v equal to your shape function here times the displacement. So again, we in this case our displacement is vertical displacement and our rotation only eh, in this case because we want to write in v1, v2, uh, uh, our rotation one and rotation number two. Um, so if you look at uh, n1, n2, n3, n4, this uh, uh, shape function over here, you see that you have uh, x power three, x power two. Uh, and even x. Eh? So in mathematic terms, we name this one as uh, a cubic spline function, a Hermit cubic interpolation. Okay, So you see n1, n2, n3, n4, this kind of uh, pattern, eh? this kind of mathematic pattern. You have 1 over L3, and then inside the bracket here, you will see x power 3, x power 2, uh, polynomial equation over here. This type of uh, shape function uh, in mathematics uh, dimension, we call it a Hermit cubic interpolation. Uh, Hermit cubic interpolation function. Uh, okay, so this one, it can be one of the research field in, in mechanical. Uh, when you look at mathematics order, and then you put this one into the uh, simulation software to run the buckling effects or the beam uh, shape function. Okay, All right. After we've done the second steps, right? Step one again. What is step one? Step one is you write all the nodes and the element number. All right. You label the nodes and the element number. All right. The second step is to find a function where we derive using the shape function just now v equal to nd this is step number two the vertical displacement equal to shape function times the displacement n yeah n is a shape function all right so this is the second step then we reach step step number three then we will stop here yeah? so step number three is to uh, recall what is the strain over displacement or stress over strain relationship. This is more on the material side. So again, um, just to recap what is strain in mechanical properties. Strain is this form. So if you if you pull a material, so this material is going to expand elongate yeah so this is delta l this is l so strain is the deformation of one of the parameter here in this case is in x direction so delta l over l is your strain 
And then what is stress? Uh, okay, what is stress? Stress is force divided by area. So if you have uh, pulling at both sides, you have a tensile force. If you have the force coming in from both ends, you have a compressive stress. And again, if you had if your force is going parallel to the area here, you have shear stress. So you have got tension stress, compression stress. These are the normal stress. You call it normal stress because it's 90 degree to the uh, not 90 degree, but it's along the axis there. Yeah. So it's, it's 90 degree to the cross section, normal stress and shear stress. Yeah. Just recall back uh, all this. Uh, what is shear stress? What is uh, normal stress? Why we call it shear stress? Because the force is parallel to the surface. Yeah. If you have a uh, area and the force is parallel to the area here, it becomes shear stress. So uh, modulus here equal to uh, uh, stress times the uh, shear uh, times the strain. Yeah. So these are the definition or uh, in the mechanical. So if you you can uh, take this one also, yeah. Either form that you can remember. So. The third step is to call out what you understand about strain, what about uh, stress relationship, and apply to the beam. Okay. So the first equation is strain equal to uh, displacement in the x direction. In this case, is du over dx. Yeah. So. So again, U is the axle displacement. What mean by the word axle? If you have a beam. So let's say this is your X direction. This is your Y direction. You, all the beam, you have your center line here. Center line. So if your force is acting on the center line, this is force. And if this force is along the x-axis, uh, along axis, uh, along axis, is called axo. Ac that you can use the word axo there, right? Axo. So if you're referring to force, if you're referring to force, it becomes axo force. If you're referring to displacement along the axis here, you become Axle uh, displacement. Okay, so this is how you 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 look at the English word here. Then you uh, relate what you learn in your mechanical uh, module. Okay, the first equation for strain equal to what happened in the x direction, the deformation or displacement in x direction. So uh, this is a new diagram for second session. So if you look at the, uh, the diagram on your screen here, you have uh, A, B, C, D. So the first one is before deformation. Let's say we have a very straightforward form or object here. We have a rectangular uh, body here. Um, and then you draw the axis. You have X axis to the from left to right. And the displacement is U. If you have a vertical Y, the displacement in Y direction is V, and you have a Z direction. Yeah? So if your Z direction is W, uh, small w. So in this case, because we, we are concerned, we are learning about the distributed load, which is also use the uh, notation of W. So uh, we try not to discuss about Z in this uh, chapter because uh, it might confuse you, right? So we just focus on distributed load W. Um, and then after deformation, when you have a, a load in both ends, let's say you have a support 
uh, you have a support in both uh, end here, and then there's a load above. There's a distributed load, or there's a concentration load uh, on the body here. The body will deform like that. Uh, it will press now and it will deform. And you can calculate the dv over dx over here. There's a small change of uh, deformation in x direction over these small places here. Yeah. So if you draw the um, the cross section of ABCD, we did this one. Yeah. So you can see that you can draw uh, a true two two triangular over here. So if you if you transfer what you see in this section to this diagram over here in C, so there is a center point of the uh, rotation angle which is negative y which is going down if you're going up it's positive y you can calculate the angle of rotation given by dv over dx okay dv over dx All right so the second equation when you want to find uh, displacement, transverse displacement. Again, for beam, you always see the word transverse. Transverse displacement, uh, or in a question later on, or in your final exam, you will ask to find transverse displacement. You mean that you will know that I'm asking you something from chapter four. Right? Other chapter, you won't see the word transverse. The keyword for chapter four is transverse. Right? Transverse uh, this displacement, you, you can write as negative y times the dv over dx by looking by using this diagram on the screen right this one diagram c yeah you can you can derive the equation for uh, u displacement in x direction will be equal to negative y times dv over dx again v here is not velocity is the vertical displacement, yeah, vertical displacement, and dv over dx actually is the angle, rotation angle, yeah, yeah. Then you can substitute what is the definition of u into here. Okay, so you know that your strain is the differentiation of u in x direction. So you take this term. You differentiate with x, you will get uh, d, d square v divided by dx square, right? So at this uh, this slide, is, again, is still back to mathematics differentiation uh, concept. Substitute your u inside the strain equation over here. Then, because you differentiate over x, you will get d square over v divided by dx square. Then move to next slides. We have two equation here. One is U equation, one is strain equation. Then call back Hooke's law. Stress equal to modulus Young or elasticity constant value times the strain. Recall what we learned this morning. M equal to EI equal to D square V divided by X square. You substitute the concept inside there. We will uh, obtain a formula called beam flexure or bending or beam bend, bending stress formula where you learn in your static or dynamic module. Stress in x direction will be equal to negative my divided by i. Okay. Your stress x equal to negative my divided by the second moment of area i. All right, you 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 substitute all what you know, u definition, strain definition, and modulus uh, your your m divided by ei definition. 
you rewrite this equation, Hooke's law, you arrive at a more simpler form in the term of moment, y, and uh, your i. So we, we have uh, two more equations to, to learn before we end our lesson today. So the first one is about bending moment, where you recall from here. Uh, this morning we learned about m divided by ei equal to double differentiation of your vertical displacement, d square v divided by x square. When you take your ei from the left into the right hand side, you get the moment definition. So if you want to find moment related to transverse displacement function, you can use this equation. Moment equal ei d square v divided by x square. This equation, again, it comes from what we learned today. Uh, m divided by ei equal to double differentiation of your uh, vertical displacement by rewriting this equation. Um, just to recap, uh, you see a small m here. If you use a big M, it means you look at the global dimension. If you use M, is look at element dimension here. Yeah? So again, you have to, at this moment, you should know what is the global dimension, what is element dimension or local dimension. Yeah, yeah. So we have an assembly of the whole system we use uh, capital M, if you only look at very, very small element, then we, we use a small M or small capital. Same with the force and the small F here, right? Same with the K and small K. Uh, displacement will always same. Huh? Displacement will always use a small T. Second equation is our shear, shear force, capital V. Um, Sail force, capital V, uh, we will relate to transverse displacement function, which is EI d power 3 V divided by dx power 3. So this one, we, uh, we learned today. Yeah? So your shear force V, shear force V, capital V equal to EI d power 3 V divided by uh, is a triple differentiation of your vertical displacement. These two, the common, uh, the common uh, notation or parameter is your small v. Small v is a vertical displacement here. Okay, so you link what is moment, what is your shear force. Yeah. Again, recall uh, what is shear force. Uh? Shear force is when you have a force that is parallel to your area. The combination of uh, this orientation, your force go parallel to the area, it becomes shear force. And if you convert this two set into stress, you become, again, stress is force divided by area. If you take this, this direction of force divided by area, then you get shear, uh, shear stress. Okay, so if, if you have force going this way, 90 degree to the uh, area here is not shear stress, but this one become normal stress. Same formula, F divided by A, but what you take is your normal stress here, you take F1 divided by A, rather than you take this F divided by A. So be careful on the direction of the force when you uh, solve beam problems. Okay. Okay, so we will derive uh, Stephen matrix in our next class. Yeah. 
Um, today, um, what just to recap what we learned today, the moment equation, uh, bending moment, eh? bending moment equation in term of EI and the vertical uh, displacement and the shear force capital V equal to EI uh, triple differentiation of your vertical displacement. And then uh, this one, V equal to N D, what is N? N is the shape function. N is a shape function. So try to understand how you get all these N numbers. Yeah. How you convert this polyromial equation into a uh, matrix form. Right. At least you try to understand what is N1, N2, N3, why you are seeing all these, all these numbers, or all these uh, X3, uh, 3, X2, how, how you get this at least you're able to explain from this equation. Yeah? Uh, because later on, you still need to come back to shape form uh, to calculate the, the, the shape form value. Yeah? And this one is important for your final exam. Yeah? Again, your test one cover chapter one, two, and three. Yeah? You have to start your revision already. Yeah? Date I will announce later on. Okay, so with this, I end the recording.